And one of the place that I liked so much was Julius Caesar. You know, one of Julius Caesar's best friend, gruesome friend, trusted friend is Brutus. At the end of Julius' life, when four of his trusted lieutenants stepped him, he was still bold and strong, you know. He was fighting, throwing everybody. But do you know when he eventually died? When one fatal blow came from his own bosom friend. When Brutus stepped him, Julius looked at him. You too, Brutus. And he dropped it. It's not the wound that killed him, you know. He died of a broken heart. A heart that was betrayed. Betrayed by his bosom friend. The friend who should cover him. The friend who should be like an armor bearer. The friend who walked with him, like what King David said, into the temple. The friend who walked with him every day, eating food together from the same plate you eat. The friend who slept together, played together, grew up together. That same friend came and stepped in. And Julius is a died of a broken heart. Same thing happened to the Lord Jesus, you know. The same disciple, three and a half years, they walked together, slept together, ate together, ministered together. He shared the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw the Lord Jesus Christ praying for hours. He saw the humility of the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw the lowliness of the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw everything. And then came the fatal blow. Unlike Julius Caesar, the Lord Jesus looked at him and embraced his enemy. Friend. Friend. That is sacrificial love. That is loving till the end. That is the epitome of the sacrificial love. Which is possible for all of us to grow into it. It's not impossible, you know. If it is impossible, the Lord Jesus Christ would not have given us an example to follow. It is possible. Now, why the Lamb? The Lamb also signifies purity and undefilement. It is pure and undefiled. That is why it is often used for temple sacrifices. It represents purity and holiness. If you read John chapter 8, verse 46, the Lord Jesus Christ very boldly looked at all the Pharisees and asked them a question. Which of you can find a fault in me? Tell me. Now, none of us can ever dare to stand up and say like that, you know. If we ever did, a thousand hands will go up. Right? Thousand hands will go up. I know, I know. From your kindergarten teacher, right up to your whatever education, you go to all your neighbors and say, I know what this guy did. Right? But look at the Lord Jesus. What boldness he had. He stood in his own hometown. Say, who of you? Which of you? I dare you. Can you can find any fault in me? Tell me now. Not a single person dared to lift up a finger because he was that sacrificial lamb. Lamb, pure and undefiled. We are called to live that life. Forget about how your past was. That doesn't matter. We are not talking about earthly persecutors or accusers, you know. You have one accuser always standing before God's throne day and night accusing us. His mouth should be zipped. For his mouth to be zipped, then you must live a clean and holy life. When you walk in purity, when you walk in holiness, then he has nothing to accuse you of. When he looks at you, he said, oh, he's, I don't have any fault with him. All I see him is his light. When there's light all over you, there's no darkness. And darkness will speak because it's the absence of light. 
and a lamb does not resist persecution. It humbly submits meekfully. In Isaiah 53, 7, it is said of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a lamb that is brought to the slaughter, he opened not his mouth. So what is another quality that you are walking in that sacrificial love when you don't resist people persecuting you? Just humbly. Don't even defend your reputation. You know, it is said of the Lord Jesus Christ in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8, He counted not His own reputation. He considered it not. Which means, He did not defend Himself. Though He was right, there was nothing wrong in Him. He could hire an attorney, okay, represent me, fight my case. He didn't do that. In fact, He told the people, at this moment, with the snap of my finger, 12 legions of angels can come down to protect me. He said, but I choose not to. I am the sacrificial lamb, ready to be led to the slaughter. So consider not your reputation. The Lord Jesus Christ himself taught us, when you are persecuted, you are so blessed. Count it a blessing. It's not something negative, you know. It's a blessing. If you're not persecuted, you lost a blessing. That doesn't mean you advertise to be blessed, to be persecuted. Don't do that. Don't go looking for it. It will come looking for you when you walk right before God. You know, I was preaching this in Israel, and one of my associates, my staff, he came and told me a very interesting story. He said, let me share this thing that happened in my life that will spice up your message. He said, tell me, when he was growing up in his village, he had two sheep, one a mother sheep, another a little lamb. And uh, he bought it from the market, and every day he fed it, he tanned it, until they all grew big. So when they grew big, he was also growing and he was not caring for the sheep anymore. So his grandmother told him, look, I am old. I cannot be running after these goats anymore. So why, since you are not caring for them, why don't you just sell them to the slaughterhouse? He said, okay, fine. So he brought both the sheep to the slaughterhouse. And when he brought to the slaughterhouse, and there was this Muslim man. In India, Muslims always sell goats, you know. They chop. And uh, several goats were hanging upside down. And these two lamb, he told me, they looked up. And they recognized their own kind hanging up there. So after some haggling over the prices, the mother goat was sell, sold first. As soon as the butcher got the mother goat, he cut her head, drained all the blood, and hang her upside down. On a hook. Now this little lamb saw all this. My staff told me he's, he saw the lamb. It saw the butcher cutting the mother. He saw the butcher draining the mother's blood. He saw the butcher hanging the mother on a hook. And this little lamb knew what was taking place. And he also knew that it's next. But it never moved a feet. It just stood there, knowing that it's going to die. That is the lamb's life. That is the character we should have. Resist not persecution. Resist not. Be willing to submit to the God who judges righteously. You know, this world system is full of evil and corrupt. All the judges that we have, corrupt men, gays anyway. You standing for righteousness, do you think you stand any chance? No. Any lawmaker that comes to 
the country, they'll change the laws for the evil of the Christians. Don't resist. Submit willingly. And when we do that, we are walking in that sacrificial life, sacrificial love. Now, another characteristic about the Lamb, it worships and adores the shepherd. If you read John chapter 10, the Lord Jesus talks about the shepherd and the sheep. How does it follow? How does it adore and worship the shepherd? By two ways. It follows him wherever he goes without asking question. Just follows him wherever he goes. If he walks into the ditch, it will all fall into the ditch. He doesn't question. That's what a sheep does. Follows unquestioningly. Secondly, it hears his voice and obeys him implicitly. It doesn't question either. Whatever the shepherd says, go and jump, it just goes and jumps. It listens to his voice. It does not argue back. It does not look at him and say, are you really sure? Can I have a second confirmation? No. You know why you don't need to ask for second confirmation? Because you know who is speaking to you. And that knowing comes out of a healthy relationship. If your husband would call you on the phone, as soon as you hear his voice, they say, Hey, Han, it's me. They say, don't they? They don't say, Honey, I am your husband, Mr. Smith. They don't say that. Hey, Han, it's me. When you say it's me, you're supposed to know who's the me. And you know who's that me because you recognize that voice. And you recognize that voice because of your relationship. In the same way, when you walk close with God, when you know His voice, why is there a need for a second or third or fourth confirmation? There's no need. Because you know who spoke with you. When God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, you never read him asking for second confirmation. So are you really sure, Lord? Can I check with my wife? You need to speak with her too so that we can come into an agreement to offer Isaac. Abraham couldn't care less whether Sarah agreed or not. He couldn't care less. All it matters to him was God spoke to him and he must obey irrespective of whether Sarah agreed or disagreed. And I am 100% sure Sarah would have disagreed. Right? Mothers, you know. Mothers. The fathers are hard-hearted, not the mothers. They are so tender, so soft. You know? You know, many, many years ago, my mother, she had some kind of a tumor in her womb. So she had to go for a surgery and she almost died on the operating table and she survived by God's grace and uh, she was recovering in the hospital so I went to visit her as soon as I opened the door to her room and when she looked up to me the, her first word was son have you eaten that was the first word you know I was very taken aback you know all Indian mothers as as soon as, or not only Indian mothers, in the Indian culture, when we see someone, the first question we ask is, have you eaten? Come, let's have a meal. That's the first question. This is an Eastern culture, you know. So I looked at my mother and I asked her, you are suffering in pain. And yet, beyond your pain, you can care so compassionately about me. That is a mother, you know, who cares so much. You find the same characteristics 
in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. In John 21, when he appeared at the shore, looked at the disciples and asked them, Children, do you have anything to eat? See? Typical Istana. First, that was the first question. Do you have anything to eat? Never ask, how are you all? How did the fishing go? But the first question was, do you have anything to eat? That is the love. You know, when you are willing to follow the Lord wherever He asks you to go, obey His voice implicitly, like a lamb that will cling on to its shepherd, only those who have crucified themselves and walk in selfless love are worthy to follow the Lamb wherever He goes, the Lamb of God. If you read Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 to 5, there will be a special class of people on this planet in the last days. And the Bible calls them, in Revelation chapter 7, the 144,000. A special group of people. And they follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Special. They have a special membership. Elite membership, you know. Why? Because they've crucified themselves utterly. They love not their lives to death. Their lives doesn't matter to them, willing to lay down. Purity. No guile found in their lips. It means he never spoke anything evil, anything negative about anybody. When you practice all this, you're crucifying yourself, you see. Your flesh, your passion, and your life to the world. All three levels, you crucify them then only the beauty of Christ Jesus will begin to shine forth in you. And you can say, like the Apostle Paul, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ Jesus that lives in me. I don't live anymore. Once you start living that life, then when you, every step that you take is a step of the miraculous. It's a step of the miraculous. Then you can walk in that realm where the Lord Jesus walked. When you speak a word, it will bring forth miracles. It will create miracles. In order to move in that, the powers of the age to come, you need to be filled with the sacrificial love. Now, if you read Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, there you read the Lamb of God standing on Mount Zion. Now, what is Mount Zion? Mount Zion used to be a stronghold, a mighty fortress, difficult to break through. But the Bible tells us in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 1, that David captured Mount Zion. As soon as he captured Mount Zion, to celebrate his victory or to proclaim his victory, he brought the Ark of the Covenant and he made it stand, place it, of Mount Zion. What is Mount Zion? Or what the old Mount Zion is? It talks about our adamant, arrogant, prideful heart. Our strong willed that will not bow down, that will not submit. Very stubborn. We will not submit. We will not lay down. That must be conquered. For the Ark of the Covenant to come and rest on the mount, then the mountain, the pride must die. The arrogancy must die. The self must die. All this must die. And only then the Ark of God's glory, the Shekinah glory, can come and rest within you abiding within you. You know, let me tell you one secret. This is Mysteries of the Kingdom Conference, right? So you want some mysteries? <coughs> you 
you know if you read john chapter 14 verse 21 up to 23 it says here it says there when you meditate the word of god and you practice the word of god i will come in to make our abode in you what does that mean we've already received the spirit of christ when you're born again you receive the spirit of christ the spirit of christ comes inside you enables you to become a child of god that is the first basic experience but in john chapter 14 it's a totally different experience where the lord jesus said i and the father will come into you and make our abode in you that is a totally different experience no for many many years early in my life i was praying this lord please come and make your abode in me please come and make me abode in me i prayed and i prayed and i prayed one day in 1994 I was up in the mountains in tibet ministering to the tibetan people so one morning i got up i was meditating the word when i heard some footsteps and i felt a pull in my spirit to go out and see so i stepped out of the tent and i saw the lord jesus christ standing there and the lord jesus said you have been praying for many years that I should come and make my boat in you. Today, I have come to answer that prayer. So when the Lord Jesus said that, he walked in and just entered inside me. When he entered inside me, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I felt filled with the Lord. Filled totally, head to toe. When I turned around, I felt that it's not I alone turning around, I could literally feel the Lord Jesus all over me. And when I looked, I was not looking through my eyes. I was looking through the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an entirely different experience. That the Lord comes to make his abode inside you. And when that happens, that brings to another level of dying. Another level. Strange, you know. Whatever, even at that level, whatever little likes or dislikes I had, I began to dislike all of them. Dislike. It just happened. I did not do anything to dislike them. It just, I just disliked them. Because it's no longer you that live, but Christ Jesus that lives in you now. So now I have another passion, you know. Because the Lord Jesus said, I and the Father will come and make my abode in you. So I only had one experience, now I need the other one. The Father coming to make his abode inside. And when they come inside, he just doesn't come and sit on the throne, you know. He says there, and I will sup with you. Which means, we'll have a meal together. That goes beyond the richness of the depthness of the word of God. You know, when I started experiencing all that, I even had received communion from the Lord's hands. His very flesh, his very blood. He said, take it. This is my own flesh. And take drink, my own blood. All that I see taking place within me. It is taking place before and within at the same time. How do you explain that? I have no earthly language to explain to you all that, you know. If you read John chapter 3, there it says, the Son of Man, who is in heaven, who is in earth at the same time. How is it possible? It's possible. At the same time. Absolutely possible. In fact, to be even in three realms at the same time, your body, your soul, your spirit. The lion, we talked about the lion earlier because John was told, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. 
Now the lion represents the reigning king of all power and authority. When all is put under his feet. Till then. Till then. The Lord Jesus is the Lamb. Till all is put under his feet. Then he will reign as the Lion. 1 Corinthians 15, 27 to 28 tells us like that. When everything is put under his feet, then he will reign all in all. But till then, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, some scholars say, the lamb, the word the lamb is mentioned 26 times, where else the word lion is mentioned only once. So I wondered, you know, if the Lord Jesus Christ is the reigning lion coming again as a lion, why is it that the lion is only mentioned once, but the lamb is mentioned 26 times. It's because of this. Till all is put under his feet. Till that time. He is the lamb. Submitted to God. Till all his enemies are put under his footstool. 1 Corinthians 15.25 Now, if you are just a lion and not a meekful lamb, then if power is given to you, you will misuse it. Let me give you two examples. First is Moses. You read in Numbers chapter 20, verses 7 to 12. By this time, Moses is already a giant before God and before people, walking in miraculous power of God. God talking with him face to face. All Israel sees that. And one day, all these 600,000 families were murmuring, ungrateful, ungrateful. They were murmuring, murmuring, and murmuring. They got into Moses' nerves so much so he got a word from the Lord. Go and speak to the rock and water will gush out to feed all these three million people. And as he came out from the presence of God, they were grumbling, they were murmuring, they were grumbling and murmuring and got so much into his nerves. In one split moment, he misused the power that was given to him and he disobeyed God by, instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the rock two times. See, one split moment, he missed it. Second example, Elisha. You read in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 23 and 24. Now, this is very interesting about Elisha, you know. When he was first anointed by Elijah, for 10 long years, he was a servant to Elijah. He washed his clothes, he cooked food for him, he waited on him, he cleaned the house, he mopped the floors. He was a servant, never asked for anything. Humble servant, big full servant. Now, he got the anointing, twofold anointing. As soon as he got the anointing, something happened to him, you know. When he came out, now he's like a superman. Superman. As soon as he came out, full of the anointing, he was greeted by 42 youths who call him, Hey, Baldy! They call him, Hey, Baldy! As soon as he heard the word Baldy, you know, a person who's bald, they know they are bald, but if you call them a baldy, they'll get very angry. So he turned around, he looked at them and said, How dare you? And he called forth for two ferocious bears to come out of the jungle, kill them. And the two bears went and killed 42 youths. 
when I read this incident, I was wondering now, two bears, 42 youths, when one bear can kill one person at one time, right? Why couldn't they have all run away? Have you ever thought like that? I pondered and I pondered, you know. Why the other guys didn't run away? There are 42 of them, only two bears. Something, I don't know what exactly happened there, or how powerful or mighty the bears were, or the bears had some kind of a paralyzing effect on all the 42 guys, that in one sweep, and it killed all 42 of them. Now, the question is this. To what purpose was this power displayed? What purpose? Was it for the glory of God? No. It's for one man's flesh vindication. It's using of power. If you have not died to yourself, if God gives you the powers of the age to come, it will kill you. It will kill you. Because you won't know how to handle it. It will kill you. So to protect you, first God is calling you, come, walk this path, die, 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 die. Walk through that path. Then once you are ready, okay, now take it. Now it won't kill you. You will be like a lamb that will carry, or like the donkey that carries the Lord Jesus Christ. The donkey like the lamb is also very unassuming, you know. No airs about it. When people were praising the donkey, oh, you sweet donkey, you're so lucky donkey, you're carrying the Lord Jesus Christ, how blessed you are, how lucky you are. The donkey couldn't care less. He just walked. He didn't care less. And when the Lord Jesus Christ got off from the donkey, nobody bothered about the donkey. And he didn't bother the donkey. It just went about its normal business. We should become like that. Amen. In conclusion, the Christ lamb, what does it really signify? The Christ lamb is alive, submitted and yielded in obedience to God. This is what God desires from us. If you can pursue this sacrificial love, if you can pursue that, if you can yearn for it, you earnestly contend for it, I don't want anything else, Lord, but to be filled with that sacrificial love. To receive that sacrificial love, I'm willing to lay down my life. I'm willing to lay down my reputation. I'm willing to lay down everything. I count not the cost. Don't count the cost. I'm willing to pay any price, Lord, so that I can have the excellency of Christ Jesus. If you're willing to say that, then you are the rightful candidate to receive the powers of the age to come. Amen? Let's stand up for a word of prayer. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Loving Father, I have communicated to your children all the words you put in my mouth to speak to them, Lord. 
Thank you, wonderful Jesus. The Holy Spirit shows me now. I see the Spirit of Christ standing in our midst like the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many here who say they are willing, but their hearts are far from it. Some of them, even while hearing these words, were scared. Can I really do it? How can I give up this? Or how can I give up that? Many are called, but only few will pay the price to be chosen. The Lord stands with arms wide open to all, to all, when he said, all that are thirsty, let him come. Invitation is for all, but few will walk in it. I see a little lamb before me, very tiny, very tiny, very tiny. So tiny like a little white mouse, that size, you know. The Lord, the Holy Spirit shows me, there are many here who are willing to receive this, what you just heard, to that level, of that tiny weeny level, not in a large capacity. Mighty strength, mighty power, great strength and great authority, that which Samson possessed, God is willing to give to his people. Even an, an anointing greater than what Samson had. But before you can receive that, you must be willing to die. Willing to put the self to death. Willing to become like the little lamb. Like the little lamb. Humble yourself so low. Make yourself so small. Like this little lamb, the size of a mouse. Make yourself so small. Lowliness of mind. Lowliness of heart attitude. Then, this mighty strength, mighty strength. You may have heard of the incredible Hulk. A fictitious figure but with enormous strength. Something like that. Greater than the strength that the fictitious character, incredible Hulk possessed. You can receive that. Mighty strength to, to do great exploits for God. Before that, I now ask you, to bring before the image of your mind, these two images, try to imagine now, this lamb that is as small as a mouse, standing beside this incredible hulk. Picture these two before the mind, before your mind. Look at their sizes. And this is the allegory that the Holy Spirit shows me now. In order to be filled with great power, great anointing, like that incredible Hulk, you must, you must become small and lowly, like the little lamb. Make yourself small and lowly, like the little lamb.
Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. If you can receive this, lift up your hands unto the throne of grace and you talk to the Lord Jesus. Lord, I am willing. I am willing. I want to make myself small like the Lamb, Lord. Go ahead, open your mouth and you talk to the Lord Jesus. As you talk, bring these two images before your mind. The image of the incredible Hulk and the image of the small little lamb, the size of a mouse. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Glorious Jesus. Gracious Lord Jesus. Wonderful Lord Jesus. I see the Lord Jesus Christ standing in our midst at the very back of this auditorium, standing at the very back and looking at all of you. Who is there who is willing to not count the cost? Who is there among these my people who are willing to take up my cross and follow implicitly after me? Who is there among these children who is willing to humble themselves so small that they may become great in my kingdom? Who is there? Are you that person? If you are willing and want to say, Lord, I want to be that person then with your hands lifted up in total submission and surrender, you open your heart and you talk to the Lord Jesus. He is standing in our midst now. He is hearing you. You open your heart. Make your heart bare and naked before the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> there are many here you will go through great pruning. Great pruning. There are many, many here. You need to die. You need to die a lot. Your mouth says, I will do this, I want that. But your flesh is far from willing. It is far from willing. Today, you make up your mind. The word of your mouth and the meditation of your heart must agree in oneness. What your mouth professes or says, your heart attitude must agree. Your actions must agree and follow suit. Do not be like the hypocrites who say one thing and do another thing. But be willing to humble yourselves and cast away these works of unrighteousness and unfruitfulness and put on Christ. Put on the crucified Christ. Put on and walk in the light as he is in the light and have no fellowship with darkness anymore. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, O oh gracious Father, O oh precious Saviour, you are our good God. 
you are our merciful kind god now i ask you lord please look at the heart and minds of every one of your dear children who are sincerely opening up their hearts and talking with you look at them now lord and i pray in the name of the lord jesus that you will come inside them lord to make your abode in them qualify them lord your blood washes us sanctifies us lord pour out your his soap upon them lord wash them with his soap that they shall be clean wash them with your blood that they may be whiter than snow qualify them lord and quantify them lord that they may have more of you and all of you thank you wonderful jesus thank you wonderful jesus glorious jesus wonderful jesus wonderful father thank you lord thank you wonderful jesus oh you are a good god lord i pray make them acceptable unto you they are already acceptable in christ jesus now i pray lord make them acceptable into the ever increasing faith make them acceptable into the last days army that they may become candidates to receive the powers of the age to come thank you wonderful god o oh lord i lift up my hands unto you and i pray that they may be worthy to be adorned in a beautiful white and bright shining garment made of fine linen clean and white as the bride of the lamb is adorned i pray the saints of god your dear children will likewise be adorned lord thank you wonderful jesus the pastor on the right you my pastor i see the lord jesus christ giving you a new shepherd's staff a shepherd's staff a wooden step shepherd's staff is about 6 feet in height it is come and place on your right hand thank you wonderful jesus thank you wonderful jesus lord i pray make this thing known to your dear servant lord what it means what it means the shepherd stuff your rod you're giving him your rod what it means lord teach him my dear pastor i see many things written on the stuff in ancient letters when you wait on the lord the things will be revealed to you what is written on the stuff and what you should do in the days to come new work new beginnings new wanderings new travelings and new leadings glorious jesus come and lift up your holy hands 
and bless the name of the Lord God who lives forever and ever. He is the soon coming King. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Oh yes, Lord, we bless Your holy name. Thank you.